this will give a lot of learnings for the WF professionals and also operations and uh, all other, you know, like HR professionals, you know, good joining now. We have got a very good uh, attendance, I mean, registration. We have got around 100 of them. And uh, let's see how many will join in. And uh, all of them have registered across the world. And it has been short notice. So still, we were able to make it. Welcome all uh, the WFM tech players in Jixo, Agenda, Sysmads. Provence, Calvio, Exaware, and uh, Printforce. It really gives us the pride and privilege to have this showcase um, benefit of uh, our WFM community. We have now uh, 20,000 members and uh, more than 40,000 uh, followers on our social media. And we have got connected and uh, we keep doing the events worldwide. Uh, we would have done more than uh, 200 events so far since last 10 years. GWFM is 10 years now. This October, we'll be celebrating 10 years. Uh, in this event, we're going to have uh, thousands of uh, delegates across the world and hundreds of speakers. And, and uh, we plan to do it in multiple locations, uh, including uh, you know, India, uh, Malaysia, uh, Philippines, UK, and a few countries, Dubai and uh, Latin America, of course, in South, Af so, uh, <clears throat> South Africa as well. So this is a plan as of now, like uh, you, know, you will get to know uh, the agenda and uh, the event uh, that is going to come in and over the target audience, the that we're going to do it and all, all the calendar that you know, is going to share. And GWFM is a non-profit organization and uh, uh, we are known for uh, diversity. We have uh, people, leaders and uh, practitioners from all over the world. We are not just limited to one particular region. We have people from North America, Latin America, EMEA, uh, APAC, and ANZ. So we are diversified in all the industry streams and across you know industries uh, sectors. So <clears throat> every event that we do is something where we gather a good number of uh, uh, people and we create a huge knowledge sharing and professional networking. This has been doing, in fact, uh, uh, we are uh, growing as the largest WFM community and uh, we share a lot of insights. We have got our own magazines, newsletters, and uh, the membership. And also we have a WFM learning platform where we have 20 of the courses which we have uh, uh, offered. And uh, so far around 10,000 WFM professionals have been benefiting from this. We'd love to uh, partner with us. Uh, some of you would like to uh, have your module shared as uh, one of the uh, practices like forecasting and uh, you know the capacity planning and probably that will definitely help larger audience. With this, I, I invite all the tech players and uh, amazing audience. Uh, audience, what I request to you is uh, please uh, uh, put your questions in the chat box. If you type permits, we will allow you to ask questions and answer. But uh, in, you know, since we have uh, seven of them, we have one hour plus time. So we, we would definitely help all these questions shared with the respective uh, product players. And I know we're there as a leaders here. We're going to present us uh, and uh, take a benefit of this as a great showcase and great learning. And this will definitely help us update ourselves and all that. To give a little up, uh, heads up, <clears throat> when we did the research till last year, we predicted that 20 billion uh, US dollars uh, worth of uh, uh, market share as far as WFM tech is concerned. Now, when we try doing uh, research since last one quarter, we find that you know, like it's going to be fifty billion because of AI and other uh, digitizing uh, uh, options. Now the WFM tech has grown. We are growing exponentially in every organization, whether they whether they really like it or not. They need to be you know embrace, adopt, and scale. Without which you know we won't be able to scale. The organizations may not be able to scale. Industry may not be able to grow. You people have been predominantly. Uh, contributing a lot to grow uh, in the industry, especially in the workforce management and customer experience and people's future management and talent management and many other areas. 
Great to have you. Great to have your shortlist. With us, I invite uh, Injikso as the first one now uh, want to share their uh, capabilities and uh, you know new features. And this is going to be a great learning for all of us. Feel free to put your questions in the chat box and we'll try answering time permitted. Otherwise, we would uh, have this share the questions with the uh, tech players and you know, they will answer you and they will connect with you. And any of you would want to have any of the demos of uh, these products, uh, reach out to me. I'll be able to connect you to them and uh, happy to help. With this, I stop my screen and uh, may I invite uh, Chris from Injubso. Yeah, I'll, I'll certainly be taking over from there. Thanks for certainly the warm introduction and, and welcome, Dr. Shiva. So if I just, I'll just set up my screen share for you, okay? Hopefully you can see my screen okay now. And uh, yes, yeah, certainly, you. perfect. Well, certainly, yeah. good morning, good afternoon and evening, everyone. I'm Craig account executive for Injixo, and today I'm excited to showcase to you our, our cutting edge workforce management solution designed to revolutionize how businesses schedule, manage and optimize their most valuable asset, their people. In the next 10 minutes or so, we will showcase the capabilities of Injixo, a solution designed from the ground up to address the challenges of modern workforce management. Injixo is an award-winning cloud-based workforce management application from Envision, WFM specialists for the nearly 30 years. Accessible from any device, Injixo is your partner in enhancing operational efficiency, elevating employee satisfaction, and delivering exceptional customer service. Let's dive into the features that make Injixo an indispensable tool for your workforce management needs. Injixo delivers a comprehensive toolbox tailored for workforce management. Each feature we explore, such as forecasting and scheduling, is like a specialist tool uniquely designed to address different aspects of your workforce operations. Certainly what we would like to do now is share with you a, a showcase demonstration of Jigsaw. Uh, we would of course be happy to arrange a, a more personalized uh, and tailored demonstration at request. And welcome to Jigsaw. So firstly, within WFM, picture this as your toolbox's sturdy base. Much like a reliable hammer, it's fundamental for building the structure of your workforce management, laying down the nails, holding everything together from managing employee contracts to crafting shift patterns. Now imagine having a tape measure that extends into the future, allowing you to precisely anticipate your staffing needs. This is what forecast does. It measures upcoming demands and generally cut your resources to fit perfectly, avoiding any waste or shortage. With our materials measured and ready, the plan feature acts as your blueprint it's where, I'll draw, where we draw out the schedule, marking where each team member should be placed, ensuring workload is evenly distributed, just like laying out a plan for a well-structured building. With intraday, consider this the adjustable wrench in our toolbox. As any day progresses, unexpected twists might occur, requiring tweaks and adjustments. Intraday lets you tighten or loosen your plans as needed, ensuring everything continues to run smoothly. And in lies is our level. It helps us check if everything aligns correctly, providing a clear view of how well our workforce management strategies are balanced out. Now think of Academy as the instruction manual that comes with your toolbox. Whether you're a novel, a novice or an experienced craftsperson, Academy provides you with the knowledge and tips to use each tool effectively, enhancing your, schools, uh, your skills and confidence. Lastly, imagine support as your go-to help hotline. Whenever you're stuck or unsure how to proceed, this feature connects you with valuable resources and experts ready to guide you, ensuring you can always find a solution and keep moving forward. As we navigate through in Jigso, envision yourself utilizing this toolbox, each feature a tool designed to help you master the art of workforce management. Within Jigso, managing your workforce becomes a more manageable, precise and efficient process. Now integrations lay the groundwork for effective workforce management and Jigsaw's platform excels in seamlessly connecting with your existing ACD and CRM systems, including popular platforms like Freshworks and Zendesk. These integrations ensure a smooth automa automatic flow of data into Injixo, eliminating manual entry and enabling consistent updates. By automating data exchange, Injixo sets the stage for more accurate forecasting and scheduling, 
making it easy to respond to changing demands and reducing the time spent on administrative tasks. At the heart of Injixo's prowess is its forecasting capability, leveraging cutting edge machine learning Injixo sifts through historical data to predict future staffing requirements up to 365 days in advance with remarkable accuracy. You can fine tune forecasts by accounting for variables such as seasonal trends, marketing campaigns, and other demand drivers. This precision allows for smarter planning, ensuring you, you're prepared to meet customer needs efficiently without the pitfalls of over understaffing. And by anticipating future demands up to 365 days in advance, down to 15 minute intervals, Injixo helps you optimize resource allocation, improve service levels and manage labor cost effectively. Scheduling with Injixo is a strategic endeavor. It goes beyond mere assignment of shifts, incorporating detailed views of each employee shift, contract and levels. The integrated heat map provides instant visual feedback on staffing alignment, highlighting areas of over or under staffing at a glance. Real-time adjustments allow you to respond swiftly to unexpected changes. While the meeting planner feature ensures that operational needs are balanced with achieving service levels. This approach not only optimizes workforce utilization, but also supports a positive work environment, contributing to higher employee engagement and retention. Intraday management, often called real-time management, is where flexibility meets foresight. Injixo's real-time adherence monitoring and performance insights gives you a comprehensive view of how plans are unfolding throughout the day, with the ability to drill down into team and individual performance, including historical analysis. You're equipped to make informed decisions on the fly. This capability is invaluable for maintaining service levels, identifying training opportunities and adjusting strategies to align with actual conditions. Intraday management within Jigsaw means being able to adapt without compromising on efficiency or customer satisfaction. Analyze your window into the operations pulse. Now within Jigsaw, creating customized dashboards to monitor key performance indicators is straightforward. The real-time visibility into metrics such as contact volumes and key KPIs empowers you to make data-driven decisions. It's about turning insights into action, identifying opportunities for improvement, and celebrating successes. Whether you're looking to enhance customer experience, streamline operations, or boost agent productivity, Analyze provides the clarity needed to achieve your objectives. And I guess last but not least, the employees. In Jixo Me redefines employee empowerment. This dedicated employee portal offers 24 seven access to schedules, enabling employees to request time off, swap shifts and engage with their schedules from anywhere on any device with an app-like experience. This level of autonomy and flexibility enhances job satisfaction, promotes work-life balance and fosters a culture of responsibility and engagement. By giving employees the tools to manage their schedules proactively, Me not only supports a more satisfied workforce, but also contributes to improved operational agility and customer service. In summary, Injixo delivers a full spectrum of features designed to streamline workforce management from seamless data integrations and precise forecasting to strategic scheduling. Dynamic intraday manageable, management, actionable insights with Analyze and empowering employees through Injixo Me, a platform equips you to excel in every aspect of workforce management. Now, our motto is we empower your people to do outstanding work. Thank you for listening. Thanks for considering certainly Injixo for your as your solution for navigating the complexities of workforce operations. Of course, don't just take our word for it, have a look at what our clients say. And we partner with organizations across multiple regions, industries and sizes, supporting their evolving needs with our Injixo platform. And here are just a few real world testimonials of the value and benefits in Injixo has made to our customers, operations, in some instances, over a very short period of time. And again, thank you for listening and for your attention today. If certainly, if you'd like more information or to speak to one of our WFM experts, please use the QR code link or email, email me directly. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks, Rish. Thanks for sharing your uh...
insights and uh, updates out now. So, and any of you have any questions, feel free to uh, rise and I will pass on to that. So now we just have time, we'll move on to the next one. Um, do we have a uh, uh, work agenda ready? Yes. Okay. I'm ready to take you through a couple of uh, slides to give an understanding. Should I start now? Yes, sure. I will share the screen. Yes, I'm trying to do so. I'm still getting host disabled participant screen sharing. Now it works. Can see your screen. Yeah. All right. Good. So um, let me take you through a short journey to give you an understanding what our agenda is. First of all, about ourselves, we are a Dutch uh, software company, although with a uh, worldwide presence and worldwide virtual organization as uh, we are present with our development in Romania. We have um, uh, points of presence in, in uh, Southeast Asia, in the Philippines, and back in US, in, in Texas. And, um, and here you also see where our customers are spread across the world. Um, and let me start with this statement made by Garner that in 2024, which is this year, organizations will be capable of reducing their operational costs. So we are talking here about OPEX, not cost of ownership, but operational costs by combining hyper automation technologies with redesign operational processes. And while this statement, it's you know, probably applicable to many industries in this world, from our perspective, it is very much applicable to the customer care uh, industry as well. And it coincides to, with the fundamentals that we used when we designed and engineered the workforce optimization solution that we uh, uh, provide for agenda as a cloud environment. And let's see how we achieve that. So actually we achieved that, as you can see in this graph by full task automation. The key word in our agenda is automation. Everything is automated, full task automation, and therefore achieving full process automation. And by doing so, uh, we are capable of integrating with different uh, other entities and applications and services in the IT background of the customer and achieving what is called this orchestration across functions. And the let's say the unexpected result of that is this business uh, reinvention because we are facing new business models in you know in different environments different parts of the world and having all these automated automation in place including the orchestration the customers our customers are really uh, capable of stepping very fast in new business uh, models uh, and that's a that's a great advantage as you know like uh, we have these gig economy models coming around in in different countries in the world and so forth and so on. So one that's one of the greatest advantages apart from the uh, from the OPEX reduction that automation uh, 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 puts in place. Um, let's see the four main steps. How what what do we mean with that automation? So basically. Um, uh, look at first of the forecast. We automated the forecast, and that simply means the user doesn't need to have any knowledge about statistical methods, nor does it need to touch any button. So we have a fully automated historical data cleanup by detecting the outliers and replacing them with uh, proper values. And after that, the cleaned up historical data is processed continuously and fully automatically uh, to produce the forecast. And um, maybe worth of mentioning is also the fact that uh, we are using advanced statistical methodologies as opposed to the classical ones. But I think later on, I may get in some more details about that. Uh, what we mean here by forecasting is the forecast with respect to the traffic, the traffic volumes, the volumes of calls per time interval, per time units, and so on. And of course, obviously, also the forecast for the average uh, for the AHD average handling times. 
once we have this forecast values ready per time interval, of, of course, like a data set, a time series uh, data, uh, that can be used to produce what is called the capacity computations. And uh, in the capacity computation, um, I think it's nowadays, and especially in this omnichannel environment where the customers are using different methods to get in touch with the customer services, like not only having calls, but using chat, uh, any kind of social media or emails and so on, it's very important to uh, to support this omnichannel through what is called blending. Uh, the, the great advantage of blending is that by mixing channels, we get a, a better operational efficiency. Why? Because those channels, from a statistical perspective, they are not varying in the synchronously in the same way uh, at the same time. So one channel might have some uh, more traffic, while the other channel at the same time uh, has potentially lower traffic. And putting them together, all that traffic, by blending, we get a definitely a, an, an increased operational efficiency and uh, a, a better occupancy of the human resources. And that simply means that uh, capacity management plays a key role here because classical methods like Erlang, regardless its flavor uh, used, it's not capable of supporting blending as we probably we all know. Uh, and therefore we need to use more advanced uh, uh, methods of computing the capacity uh, for such blending uh, 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 models which are required in an omnichannel environment and multi-skill environment. And that's what we did uh, in, in Agenda. You can, you can blend whatever number of channels uh, for a specific service and uh, really get uh, quite huge differences uh, in comparison with the scenario where you, you would treat those individually. Then the next step is obviously scheduling. Once we produce this capacity per time interval, uh, which again is of course automated, you, you uh, just click on a button and then you produce that for the whole week for all queues, all services if you want. Uh, what happens in our agenda is also um, a unique step uh, and that is uh, uh, basically defining, generating the shifts out of those required capacities. And that is a, a, another optimization uh, um, uh, uh, step um, because it's looking at all conditions that are in a specific environment from different perspective, uh, enterprise perspective, low perspective, and so on. And based on that is generating the most uh, uh, optimal shift for that uh, expected traffic. And um, then we get to the step of uh, scheduling, which actually means matching the um, uh, human resources that we have in place with the shift that have been designed for a specific traffic in a given situation, in a, you know, taking all the co local conditions into account. And that matching takes a number of basic mandatory factors into account, like, of course, uh, the skills of those resources, the availability of those resources, including all the applicable rules uh, by law or by enterprise conditions, uh, which may apply to those uh, human resources. And if you take such all those conditions into consideration, uh, together with a, let's say, a large number of agents, like maybe at least 100 or 200, then what happens from a mathematical perspective, you get a huge number of combinations. That's called, in math terms, it's called a combinatorial explosion. And I can assure you that we resolve that because we are capable of scheduling, like you see here, 3,000 3, multi-skilled agents or employees, whatever we call them, in two minutes for a full week. That's a couple of millions of uh, options if you if you uh, uh, would express that in uh, as combinations, and they are just solved in a couple of minutes. And then, so that's again fully automated. You don't need to touch any agent profile to determine whether it's assignable or not. It's it's just fully automated. You click on a uh, on a button and you go for uh, two minutes for your coffee. Yeah. And when you get back, the schedule is done and dusted. And the last step of 
uh, uh, in this operational process, the intraday, it's, I think it's a well-known term, what happens, let's say, today. And we all know that regardless how good the forecast is, and by the way, the forecast we produce has a wave of uh, three to five percent, which uh, indicates a high degree of accuracy. Um, regardless how good the forecast is, uh, we always have a variance between the forecast and the actual traffic. And what this intraday, uh, automated intraday management does is helping you to manage any kind of such uh, variance that may occur ahead. So it's not putting you on the back foot and get it surprised by any kind of traffic increase, but it's simply letting you manage that ahead. It's telling you, this is what you are going to expect the next hour or so. And is also giving you the required tools, automated tools, actions in place with uh, the touch of a, a, a button to cope with the new uh, situation that may occur uh, and, and to manage that differences, those differences uh, in a very simple way. That's what we call this fully automated intraday management. And actually is a process that runs throughout the day continuously and gives you alarms if anything occurs that needs to require of the intraday uh, uh, manager. As already mentioned, Orgenda is a cloud solution. Of course, it can run in on-premise, but um, we always advise our customers that running on-premise, um, it's always a, a sort of uh, a, a big disadvantage if you look at it from a security perspective, because the degree of security provided by uh, economy of scale data centers is not achievable, achievable in any on-premise deployment. So from that perspective, we advise them to run in uh, in the cloud. We provide a solution from ISO 27001 certified data centers worldwide. Uh, as you have seen, our customers are uh, deployed in the world from uh, South and North America up to uh, uh, Southeast Asia in, uh, in, in many countries in different uh, regions of the uh, world. And um, uh, by by uh, doing so, we are uh, capable of supporting any kind of omnichannel environment. So it doesn't matter what kind of um, environment the customer is having for handling the traffic, whether it's voice, emails, uh, social uh, media channels, messaging, whatever. Uh, simply, it doesn't matter. It's a linearly scalable environment, so you can start with a, let's say a small deployment, like maybe a couple of hundreds of uh, employees or agents and go up to tens of thousands uh, with no change in in deployment. It's just uh, you can uh, you can grow it linearly and independently by itself. Um, we have uh, also a very subtle but at the same time very important uh, item, which is the location. When you host agents or employees in a specific location, that location has its own time zone which it's uh, playing a, a, a very important role in presenting the data. So you might have, for example, and we have such examples, we have a, a, a customers, BPO customers uh, in Southeast Asia serving uh, uh, customers in North America, in the US. So the customer is it's in Eastern Standard Time, for example, while the agent uh, involved in, in, in serving that specific customers are either in Nicaragua, India, or the Philippines. So, or all three together. And in such environment, then uh, uh, using this uh, concept of location and virtual location, we are capable of presenting the customer with real time information in their own time zone. So everything about the traffic, service level, occupancies and all that is presented in the local time of the customer while every individual uh, um, a human resource that is participating in the schedule for that specific customer is receiving all and seeing all the information in its own local time zone. And uh, in doing so, of course, as we all know, uh, customers like, you know, the end user uh, customers like banks and telco uh, providers and so on, they are using, uh, they are uh, outsourcing the, the customer care business to not only one BPO, but to a number of them. And for that specific 
uh, scenarios, we have what we call these uh, third party management. So we can handle in the same scenario um, uh, those third parties uh, by presenting an integrated view of the service level for a specific service, regardless where those uh, outsourced resources are. So all four steps in this process are uh, fully supported. And of course, there is a dashboarding and reporting facility, but that's just like a, a, a simple must have kind of uh, a facility. And, and by the way, we also provide the same data that you can, that you see, uh, or you can download in our reports. Uh, we provide that to a tree integration to any data farm that may uh, exist in the customer IT space, uh, which they can use then to produce other type of uh, reports uh, for different levels in their uh, enterprise. Just an example, what we meant by, you know, by automated uh, forecast, as you can see here, detecting, detecting a trend, that's a rather simple application, but one more difficult factor is detecting all three basic uh, 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 data features that you need for producing a good forecast, which is trend level and seasonality, uh, with the reality that seasonality is not a simple data feature, but it's a quite complex one because we might have a seasonality throughout the day, uh, 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 having seen the, 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 the different time intervals. We also might have a seasonality throughout the week or throughout a certain period of time, depending of the season and so on. So all these three basic items are detected automatically and, and uh, used to, to determine, to compute automatically the forecast. But on, not only those, there are other type of uh, uh, data features like heteroscedasticity, data skewness, and so on, that uh, are all taken into account which is not the case when you use classic methods like, you know, whole twinters, uh, any kind of linear regression in ARIMA or SARIMA and so on. So um, another aspect that we see as a quite important aspect in providing the right level of human resources is keeping track of uh, what you would need going to need in the future. And of course, um, knowing uh, what kind of traffic you expect for a specific service in the future, it's very important. But at the same time, it's important to know what uh, should happen with the size of your team that you need to have in place uh, uh, to handle uh, th th that upcoming traffic. And one important factor in there is the shrinkage. So we have on board also very specific facilities for computing the shrinkage forecast based on the sh historical shrinkage data. We see as a more or less standard practice that many companies, whether it's an end user or BPO, they are using sort of fixed values for <clears> shrinkage. <throat> while in reality, as you can see here in this image, the shrinkage is really not uh, constant, but is taking different values even uh, uh, throughout the day. Uh, so kind of wind up sooner by exceeding the time. Other players also. Right. So that's what I wanted to, to, to show in a, in a nutshell, in a short bird flight. Of course, uh, if you need to get more information, just drop us uh, a question on our website, wargenda.com, and uh, we can take it from there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Kirsty. Wonderful uh, agenda. Right now, uh, we'll invite uh, Calvio. We have Kushal. Kushal, can you have your screen up? Yeah. Yep. Can you see my screen? And am I audible properly? All set to go, Kushal. Yeah, go ahead. Awesome. Perfect. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being with, uh, being with us here today. My name is Kushal Shah, and I lead pre-sales for Calabria in India and Sark. Um, as the theme says, and I, you know, as we all do for a living, Calabria offers a class-leading uh, omni-channel workforce management solution, which ensures that, you know, the critical equation you have of how many interactions am I going to get versus how many agents do I need is always well balanced so that your people costs are always in check while your productivity on the floor is as, uh, you know, maximized as it can be with the, the tools that we offer the, to the supervisors and to the team leaders so that they can manage and monitor the performance plus make real-time changes so that uh, you're always on track and exceed your service level goals. 
The workforce management tool also has a rich and powerful agent engagement and self-service features, which are accessible through a mobile app or through a web portal that empowers them to make the changes to their schedules, make requests, swap shifts, motivate them through built-in gamification and keep them engaged and content, all of which ultimately results in the agent retention going up and also will allow you to cater to an ever-changing workforce supply chain. So today, I will be talking about why Calabria WFM should be a vendor of choice when you're looking to manage a complex, multi-skilled, omni-channel workforce, as well as how Calabrio has the tools to support the changes in how agents are being employed through, uh, you know, gig working economy, split shifts, um, you know, short shifts through the day, part-time workers, contract workers. It's it's a it's a workforce that's very much in flux today, but we have the tools that will ensure that you can manage them and make sure you can get the best out of them in your workforce. So how do we do that? So WFM is not really a one for one or matching skill exercise in any, you know, these days. So customers connect to connect with your brand across multiple channels. They go through self-service and automation, which kind of will take ensure that your basic calls, your easy calls are all handled. And agents are now handling much more detailed and complex customer questions and queries. So WFM solution needs to be empowered to the needs to empower the contact center to dynamically match skill-based scheduling with skill-based forecasting. Now we tackle this challenge with something which we call as dynamic resource allocation, which will perfectly and predictively put the right agents with the right skills in place in place to increasingly meet complex customer demands. So how that works is essentially we calculate resources based on multiple discrete skill sets, which starts with a customized algorithm that creates a separate skill based forecast for each channel. And that predicts which skills will be needed in each channel. That algorithm then matches the agent skill proficiencies to optimize scheduling. And all of this happens in real time. So all of these algorithms are dynamically updated by up to the minute information and Calabrio WFM will automatically all, all allocate and balance resources, which always ensures that you give the best possible customer experience to your end clients, as well as doing that at the lowest possible cost to serve. So we'll take a small example to understand how that entire process works, right? So if you consider a small understaffing situation on three skills in a 15 minute interval, you need five resources, but you've only got four available with you. So how? So what dynamic resource allocation is going to do is it's going to make sure that it allocates and splits up agent time across all of these different skills, so that you're always, you know, on track to hit the goal that uh, you know you're you're automatically optimizing that across all of the different skills. But then a contact center is not really a you know a stable. Uh, from uh, is, is not something that's known to be very stable is not known something that's um is is a place that doesn't change there's always a lot of dynamism that happens on the floor things are in flux agents may call in sick a website may go down the application mobile application is not working anything can essentially happen which will kind of throw your forecast out for the day right so what does that mean for us what does that mean for your forecast so in this example, if you've got an agent who's unavailable, does that mean that your skill A is going to be understaffed? Which will be true if you're running, if you're working on a system that relies on simulation to distribute resources across the skills, because then you'll have to wait for a re-simulation and hence a re-forecast to happen. But that's not the case with Calabrio, where we always you know, uh, run the algorithm is always running in the background, which makes that, which, which, means that there is a real-time optimization always happening so that you're always on track to deliver a best possible customer service at the lowest possible cost. And not only that, so dynamic resource allocation will also ensure that you get predicted service levels because we are automatically monitoring the uh, service level through the day, through the week, through the month to ensure that the targets that you've set when you create the forecast are always going to be achieved. And then with the addition of multiple skills and agent skill profiles and different channels, the complexity always keeps increasing. But that complexity for Calabrio actually means that the algorithm has, uh, you know, that much of a wider user pool across which it can optimize the resources. So, I mean, the more the complex your 
operation is the number more channels that you have the more skills that you have the more uh, diverse your agent population is dynamic resource allocation is going to be that much more powerful in optimizing your workforce across all of that to ensure that you know you give the best possible customer experience but as you know uh, Pasti also mentioned and something that's true and something that we've all been hearing about is that the workforce is changing and as if managing a contact center is not complicated enough already as gig economy part-time workers contractual workers increase in priority in popularity and such work contracts will become mainstream at a certain point of time your wfm tool also needs to be in step with those changes so how can Calabrio help in that situation right so with the Calabria WFM, what you have is a powerful agent engagement uh, capability that's wrapped in a very easy to use Outlook-like interface, which is going to allow the agents to mark in their preferences on, you know, as an example, mark in the preferences when they'd be like, uh, you know, when they'd like to work, uh, indicate their uh, available time, go to the possible extent of, you know, building your own schedule if that's a flexibility that you're willing to offer to your agents. A mark, uh, you know, may mark themselves available for overtime, uh, app process, absence requests, leave requests, shift trade, shift swaps, all automatically with guardrails set in the system so that, um, you know, you don't <laughs> approve anything that is going to impact your service level. And all of this is available in a mobile application as well. You've got a mobile app that runs on Android as well as iOS that will ensure that, you know, Everything that you can do in the web portal, all of the good things that we just saw is all available in the mobile app as well. You put the agents in charge to make, uh, you know, of their time and make your management easier. Give them the flexibility to engage with you wherever they are through the mobile application. Automate as much as you can of all of these administrative tasks so that your team leaders and managers can focus on making sure that, you know, they are monitoring the workforce and they are making changes so that, productivity, your occupancy, all of the key metrics that we love to measure and love to provide our customers as a measure are something that they're always in control of. And that's not just, you know, why just take our word for it. We've got customers all across the world who adopted this workforce management solution to great benefit of their organization where, you know, as an example, GE Appliances saw a 25% decrease in agent attrition with all of the agent engagement features that we were able to roll out for them. Uh, Kazu saw, saw an increase in adherence. Dish Network saw an increase in scheduling efficiency. There was let, less attrition is something that you will see all across the board. There's a 20% increase in adherence. The results speak for themselves. Work, Calabria Workforce Management is some is is a proven vent, is a proven solution that can deliver outcomes for you, which you may be seeking for. And with that, uh, we have a big announcement to make. You all are, uh, you know, we just released the press. Uh, we just had a press release yesterday, and this is hot news of the of the, uh, you know, hot news for all of you is that we are launching our cloud in India. It's going to be available in early H two, so somewhere around the June to July timeline this year. In the next three four months, it's going to be hosted out of AWS in Mumbai. We're going to be offering our entire gamut of services. So Calabria just doesn't do workforce management. We've also got quality. We've got analytics. We've got bot management. Uh, all of that is going to be available through the cloud. And we're also going to be launching the cloud with Hindi language analytics and all the possible certifications you could hope for. We are ISO certified, PCIDS is certified, HIPAA certified. We are soon going to get FedRAMP ATO approval as well. We're SOC 2 type 2 and, HIP and GDPR compliant as well. So that's it that I had in my presentation. I hope you found it insightful. If there's any questions, if you'd like to get in touch, please visit our website, calabrio.com. Or, you know, feel free to drop us an email to know more about what we can do for your organization. Thank Thanks, you. Thank you so much for being a wonderful audience. Thank you. Thanks, Kushal. Great. So, uh, can we have uh, Susamat now? Sure. Thanks, Dr. Shiva. And welcome, everybody. My name is Sumit. I'm from Prohans. And uh, in the next uh, 10 minutes... I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Sumit, so uh, I think, you know, we are uh, now lined up... Uh, CC math. Oh, uh, apologies. I heard my name, so I just jumped on the chance. I'll step back. Just wait for a while and like once CC math. Just yeah. 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 be all. Yeah. Uh, one moment. Yeah. Oh, 
have to get the slideshow on the way. Slideshow, here we go. And now I have to share the screen. Yes, we can see the screen now. Go ahead. Ah, very good. So uh, good afternoon, good morning, and uh, good evening. Um, my name is Wout Bakker. I'm the CEO of CC Math. Um, CC Math is a company also from the Netherlands. Um, uh, we've been in existence for about 20 years, and we are building um, uh, software solutions for contact centers for about 20 years as well. Um, today is a tech show, so I decided to give you a little insight in uh, one of our tools. Uh, one of our tools is called CC Forecast. It's a scheduling uh, forecasting solution used by companies around the globe. And um, I wanted to show you a little bit about what we do in CC Forecast nowadays. Um, as CC Math, uh, the name comes from Contact Center Mathematics. Um, we have a mission and a vision. Uh, our vision is that all stakeholders in contact centers uh, can benefit from innovative WFM technology. So we try to um, actually capitalize on our link with various universities uh, around the globe. Um, and uh, we try to bring the complex mathematics as also explained by other vendors today to, um, uh, to the general public, which often isn't very easy, but, uh, but doable. Um, our mission is becoming one of uh, the dominating world players in WFM software through product leadership. So we hope to um, yeah, actually convince all our users um, and, and prospects that um, using our technology will actually um, work the best. Today, I will show you a little bit on CC forecasts, unique features and, um, um, and possibilities. So if we look at a traditional forecast, um, a lot needs to be done. You need to export data from your tool. Uh, it's ex imported in Excel or into any other system. You have to clean your data for outliers. You have to look at certain events, where they're happening, where they're not happening. Um, you have to take them out. You have to label them in your data. Then you have to run multiple models, depending on your forecast horizon. Uh, if I have a budget forecast, uh, maybe I don't take individual marketing campaigns into consideration. But when I do my tactical or my operational forecast, I would look at these specific uh, marketing calendar uh, events. Um, I want to choose a model based on the interval level of the forecast. Do I need intraday data? Do I need uh, intraweek data? Do I have intraday data even? Um, I want to look at queue aggregations. Do I want to forecast certain queues together? Because sometimes queues are so small that it's eh, it's it's just not feasible to forecast them separately. Um, and how do I want to aggregate those queues? Um, uh, what is the queue granularity? Um, is it weekly, daily, uh, intraday? Uh, do I have call by call data? Um, then I have to decide on the best fit. What model gives the best fit? to the um, um, uh, to the training set of data. I add my future events. I have to handle external regressors if I have like weather, marketing data, sales figures. Um, then I have to export that data all again from Excel or from Tableau or whatever system you're using. Um, and I import the, that into uh, the further tooling you're using. Could be our scheduling application, could be any other vendor of, of, um, uh, of scheduling software or capacity software, and then, um, and then go on. So what is the challenge here? Well, the biggest challenge is that you have all sorts of error types in these forecasts. Um, you have data validity errors. Hey, did I get my data right? Uh, do I measure what I think I measure? Um, you get data export and import errors. Um, did I make a mistake? Did I export all the data? Did I export all the queues? Did I export at the right granularity? And did I import all this data in the right way? Um, you get formula errors. Did I set up the right formula? Yeah. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence about 
that every Excel um, typically has uh, about 10% uh, of the of the of the cells have uh, slight errors in them or could be better. Um, we have interpretation errors. Um, well, maybe forecaster one will say an outlier is an outlier at 10%. And another uh, forecaster would say, no, an outlier is an outlier at 20%. Um, oh, was this marketing event, was it actually an event or do we consider it uh, basic fluctuations in the data? Um, so you have all these interpretation errors that take place. And then you have your model errors. Do we use hold winters or do you, do we use some 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 exponential smoothing algorithm or do we uh, did we even choose the right model? Um, and then did I press the right button? Uh, didn't I forget to make a forecast in the right way? So and and, and we can go on. I, I put some some dots there, but if we really start talking and I know in the audience and also in the panelists, there's a lot of people who know a lot about forecasting. So if we can actually would would sit together and have a discussion or have a have a beer or a coffee over over the topics we would co could come up with with a lot of extra errors that we could find and i think the key is how can we solve those errors what what can we do about them how can we make that easy and how can we make sure that when we get to the final stage and now today where you do your intraday management that the amount of intraday management that you have to do is as little as, as possible. Um, uh, what if the forecast system would take over all those repetitive tasks as much as possible and thereby reduce error as much as possible? Well, um, if we would have that, it would actually mean that your, um, your forecast accuracy would be as high as inhumanly possible. And with what I mean with that is let's take out as much as possible all these human errors, uh, a wrong data export, a wrong data input, uh, a judgment error, interpretation error, a difference between people, difference between forecasters. So let's give them all the same dashboard to work from, give them clear menus, to choose from, okay, how would you, what scope are we looking at? What graphs are, do you want to look at? What snapshot do you want to take of the data? And what snapshot do you want to take for your, um, um, uh, for your capacity plan and for your schedule? And basically leave all the forecast settings. Oh, wait, I have to go back one slide. Leave all the set forecast settings as much as possible to um, to auto, but still give you control over the most important things. Uh, because it's not, it's not like whenever you make a operational forecast, you want to include all events. It's not when you make a strategical forecast that you never want to take the impact of the events uh, or you want to take the impact of the closed days or the open days in a certain year. And you would also always want to be able to wiggle with it, to change with it, to play with it a little bit, to make this forecast really well. And um, CC forecast, and that is probably our biggest innovation, is that we tried as well as we could to, to make that balance right. So it's not all about having just, and, and I made a, a screen here, yeah, like a one button forecast where you press a button or you don't press a button at all and it will give you the forecast, but you can't change it anymore or you can't adapt it anymore. It's about having a forecast ready for you at the moment you need it uh, in different versions or in different snapshots for you to take a look at and, and then make an informed judgment call on what forecast to use in um, in your schedule and in your capacity plan. And of course, you want auto detect features for events, for holidays. Um, you want the system to auto adjust for days that are closed in the history and days that are closed in, in the future. Uh, for marketing events that repeat themselves for 
um, bill runs that happen in the past and that happen in the future. You all want that automated. So, but you want to take a look at it, judge it, and then continue by making your forecast. So same with intraday patterns. Of course, you want a method that would create your intraday patterns automatically. And we use very sophisticated spline technology to make a very good intraday pattern automatically with a running window. So once you set it, you don't have to look at it again, but hey, then there's this new queue. How are you gonna organize the intraday pattern for this new queue? Well, you can literally draw it with our tool and make it and then use it to, um, um, to make your intraday forecast. Um, given the time, I've got two more minutes. Um, I've got some testimonials here about companies who use our, uh, our software. I'm very happy. Um, we've got actually quite a bit more if you're interested. So feel free to contact us or take a look at www.ccmat.com. Um, we have ROI calculators to help you find out whether CC forecast could be in addition to your call center uh, and making a business case for you. And um, even more CC math, uh, we have all sorts of other tooling like a scheduling solution with the supplier of Erling X. Uh, we've got um, um, e-learnings, uh, we've got agent apps. So um, feel free to browse around on our website and give us a call. And um, thanks uh, GWFM, thanks Shiva for giving us this podium and um, happy to uh, to give my place to the next presenter. Thanks, Sissi Matt. If there are any questions, we'll pass on. Now we'll move on now to uh, Bronze now. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Shiva. And good evening, everyone. My apologies for the four power earlier. CC Matt and Summit sounds very similar. So kind of have that right. I'll bring up my screen and uh, I'll ask all of us to take a step back, right? I mean, uh, when we look at workforce management solutions, we look at back of, like, like you know, the, the contact centers, right? Um, is my screen visible? Yes. Great. So basically, you know, we invest a lot of time and we invest a, a lot of attention on our contact side, right? Our contact blended processes. But what is happening in our back office operations really, right? Where associates spend eight hours on the system, right? So basically, Prohans as a, as a, <clears throat> um, it, like the new age, uh, you know, op, uh, like workforce and, and its platform that helps us really get insights into how our back office operations are doing, right? So the whole ethos of Prohance is if we can measure or, or if we can have metrics of measurement or consistent measurement in our back office that can actually drive the entire operations wing as well, right? So we spoke up, I mean, we saw in our earlier demos on on how to really optimize the, you know, the contact center forecast, contact center, um, you know, engagement, etc. But really, if we have a bad back office, right, that will also lead to a bad demand, uh, you know, generation for the contact site, right? So basically, Prohance is an op is a workforce and it is platform for the back office or anywhere where users are spending majority of their time on workstations, right? It helps leadership uh, stay connected. It helps businesses stay optimized and it helps end users stay engaged. So basically, we can look at Prohance as a Fitbit for the entire workforce, right? Um, you know, if we, if we take an example, right, um, an athlete, right, they, they monitor 100 plus parameters for consistent performance and top performance, right? So, and as we know, operations is not fixed, right? Operations is dependent on human capital, on really our human workforce. So how do we really, uh, you know, optimize our operations? How do we truly, you know, unlock that, unlock that true human potential, right? So that is where Prohance comes in. Prohance solves a lot of challenges in this hybrid and distributed environment, right? We have um, inaccurate time capture. Where is time really is be being spent? Is it spent on core work? Is it spent on non-core work, right? What is the outcome? Are associates productive or is my team productive? Is time going into some leakage activity or like a non-value add activity, right? Uh, we are also looking at, uh, you know, uh, asset optimization. You know, uh, we have a module of the, of the same name, but how are our, our, our hardware and software assets utilized, right? Um, so all of these aspects is what kind of Prohance uh, covers, right? So 
if you look at let's say an impact we are able to like you know uh, optimize time by 15 to 30 percent productivity on the same metrics reduce over time and we see in a live you know in a live environment on like like how that's done and absolutely then impact the profitability of the organization okay. from a global standpoint uh, we have close to uh, 320000 licenses across 24 plus countries uh, and we have a clientele of 170 plus customers and counting right so we are a truly you know like global platform we are present on i think five continents uh, and all of these different countries right so our clients are industry agnostic right we have clients across healthcare across uh, you know across bfsi across gccs um, across it industries right wherever the users are spending adequate amount of time on workstations and that includes blended processes where users have soft phones right uh, we prohans is a, is a solution there to truly look at and uh, you know at engagement levels and and really uh, you know provide that unprecedented level of of visibility right and this visibility is actually even more required in this day and age of distributed and hybrid workforces right people are working out of anywhere any place at any time right so how do we really uh, you know um, uh, uh, get that visibility into insight right or or what the or you know where is time being spent what, what is the productivity etc so that's where prohance comes in right prohance is a modular um, application right we have a work time module that talks about time spent into value add and non value add we have multiple use cases of equitable workload balancing schedule adherence um, you know uh, uh, visibility into work patterns then we have that followed by the advanced analytics modules, which like which basically bring uh, you know paint a long term picture of the of, of trends. Let's say for example, if you have a process excellence wave, right? How efficient is that, or how is the metric uh, you know kind of driven? Then we overlay that or peel the onion further by adding a layer of volumetric output on top of the time aspect as well, right? What is the really you know like like what is the true productivity? Um, uh, on on the on the time spent, and then we have other modules of asset, which basically helps us understand or visualize our hardware and software assets, and how we are and and kind of how can we optimize their usage more efficiently, right? Uh, case in point, if we have expensive softwares, right? Are those softwares being utilized? Could we cross leverage some licenses, etc.? And then we have our end-to-end -end DPM orchestration suite that's called a workflow module that kind of uh, you know. Uh, 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 like provides us, uh, you know, insights into real time dashboards where each task is. We have uh, prioritization and, and allocation logics. Uh, it basically automates the entire uh, workflow, right? So that our managers can spend more time marshaling the queues instead of really doing MIS there. Plus, we are, plus uh, we have uh, rich analytics, uh, and I'll showcase that shortly, right? So I'll make the tool real for you, and this is our demo where even my data is collected, right? So basically, the architecture is pretty simple. We have the Prohance and the client on the user system, and then the data is captured, and then it kind of paints this picture for us, right? What we're able to see is what is the value add out of the total time that the users are spending on system? Where is time being spent? Now, this is for a customer-facing team, where teams are spending more time on meetings and communications, right? If it is, let's say, a back office team or an inverse processing team, where is time really being spent, right? Am I, or is the team spending uh, time where it's required or there is leakage somewhere, right? Is the team considered, you know, uh, it, like is the team made up of more uh, freshers uh, that are spending more time on clarification calls? Uh, is the right task getting allocated to them? All those kind of insights become possible when we look at the data, right? Prohance, what also it provides, it, it provides us, uh, you know, uh, with the capability to create our own reports. Right, where we're easily able to look at very intuitive heat maps, where we're seeing that which teams are doing well on which metrics. Right, let's say for example, I'm track, uh, like I want to optimize my time spent on core work. I know that for a few users, uh, the uh, you know the core work metric is not doing that well. So how do I increase that? Right, all those questions can be answered here. Let's look at avenues of workload balancing, where we're easily able to understand where teams are spending time or which team is spending more time, uh, which users are spending more time being productive, right? For that matter, right? Are some users more loaded 
because some users have capacity available, we are easily able to, you know, like visualize that and then load balance. In this example, we have seen that, let's say I can move some work from these people who are constantly overloaded and I can move that, uh, that work to, let's say, uh, this bunch of people who have some capacity, right? If we have more overload loaded people, we can hire more. If we have people with available capacity or people who are, you know, uh, uh, like who have some bandwidth, we can definitely take up more volumes, help us plan our workforce properly better. This doubles up as an early warning system for, for attrition as well, where people are, you know, with extreme, like who are extremely engaged and who are extremely less engaged can be, you know, can, uh, 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 like can be noticed and the corrective action can be taken. Right. We have insights into attendance, virtual badging, right? In this hybrid and distributed environment, managers and leadership need, need to understand who logged in, right? We are easily able to paint a picture of, of, of how many people logged in and then also drive schedule adherence as well, right? If we have shift rosters, we can look at what is the, you know, the adherence to the schedule, what are the exceptions, etc right we also have the capability to kind of roster in their breaks etc and then track exceptions based on the uh, actual uh, you know uh, uh, time that they take that they took the break right now adding to that from employee centricity the employee sees their own data right we are completely transparent the employee sees their data the managers see the uh, their reportees data. The leadership sees the the data for the entire organization. So what we you know able to paint a picture of is an uh, you know a pattern you know a visualization of the work pattern, right? Let's say in this case we are you know we are able to understand uh, the employee is logged in or you know on the system for so long because they are taking a lot of breaks. Can that be optimized? Can we kind of recommend the employee to work in a certain pattern, right? In this case, the employee also is able to look at their data. Like I, I'm looking at my own data, right? I am seeing, I am understanding that I don't need to, you know, I can optimize my work day. I don't have to stay logged in for 12, 13 hours, right? I can improve that myself, right? So, uh, and again, that is only on one module, right? Let's go to advanced analytics where we are actually able to, you know, uh, to paint long-term trends, right? Let's say, for example, this, right? We are easily able to see for 2023, six months for different teams, how has a certain metric been? Has a certain metric gone up? Has a certain metric gone down for that? Right? Uh, are the, are the, I mean, are, you know, are our initiatives working for that? Right? We can easily play, look at distribution analysis. Let's say the entire team's average, right, is one value, but how are teams contributing to that? Right? Are some are some members uh, positively contributing? Are some members negatively contributing? What is the reason? Could we optimize that? Could we, uh, you know, could we, uh, uh, like, could we uh, pointedly intervene in some cases? Right. All those cases, you know, all those aspects become possible here. Overlay the, you know, overlay that with outcome data. Right. Basically, we know that let's say forty percent time was spent on core work, but now after implementation of this platform, we have 80% time spent on core work, right? What is the outcome really, right? We are easily able to plot that in a, in a two by two metric. What we are now able to see is, are people spending more time, but not generating that output, right? Are people spending less time and not generating that output? Again, the intervention styles will be very different here, right? Here in this quadrant where people are spending adequate amount of time, this would require training. This could be our new joiners who are not able to achieve uh, their volumes, right? Or this could be new joiners who are allocated really complex transactions, right? Whereas contrast that to people here who are able to achieve their, you know, their, their volumes, but not necessarily able to achieve, you know, uh, or not necessarily spending time really being do, doing core work, right? Now, these people could be seniors who are cherry picking tasks, these people could be seniors who have developed, you know, like who have developed a, a best practice. They could coach the other members, or these people could do more, right? From an allocation standpoint, right? So to plan like capacity, this charts also can be used, right? Then we have heat maps also, where we're easily able to look at percentage contribution, where we are easily able to understand, um, you know, how is, uh, or, let's say, how much percentage of uh, of of the targets are being completed. Right. If we see more reds, more ambers, could we realign the targets? 
are the right tasks going to the right people? Is my uh, junior getting an easy task or a difficult task whereas compared to a senior, right? What we are then able to understand is really a, a you know a, a, a team level productivity metric. So this, let's say, and then we can do comparison between teams and within teams. A salient feature of Prohance is that we can slice and dice data into very different formats. And let's say, for example, I want to look at uh, top categories. Let's say I want to look at business impact. So it's very flexible, right? The entire um, the entire framework of the metrics of the thresholds is completely up to the organization and even within the organization completely down at a team level right so we can have different thresholds different settings for different team members right now what prohance actually then does it it paints a picture of again as, as i said the overall productivity of the of the users right now let me go back to the chart a little bit so our key use cases again as i said include truly unlocking the the true potential of our human capital right because in operations that is the you know those that is our asset right then we have process optimization where we are easily able to understand is time going into core work or non core work then we look at um, you know hardware and software asset utilization where we are actually able to understand let's say if you have an expensive software right and let's say if if you have an expensive for, uh, like software is the software being used Right. If you have Tableau, if you have, you know, like procure hundred licenses of Tableau, is that being used properly? Can I cross leverage that? Right. Now, what we also have is here a map view as well. Right. Let's say, and again, this was a a a, a keen requirement uh, during the pandemic area where we had to plan for BCP and asset recovery and uh, location based, you know, uh, like vaccination drives. This is also current, right? If we have to plan for BCP, let's say, for example, you know, uh, God forbid, right? An earthquake strikes so, uh, a certain province in the Philippines, right? Who are our, our people there? Can we bring them back? Uh, or or how do we, you know, plan for BCP in the event of a location going dark, right? So all those aspects become, or, or use cases are prevalent from a, uh, you know, within our asset optimization module, right? Now, I'll quickly go back to the slides. We'll cover a few more things. So these are a few salient features we can deploy anywhere. We can deploy desktops. We can deploy in Citrix, in VDIs. We also can support, you know, their own devices, right? We Our main USP is our ease of deployment. We can be up and running in less than 48 hours given all internal approvals. The, you know, the server readiness all is in place, right? Uh, they have exceeded the time by the wine glass. Yeah, I'll just take two minutes, Dr. Shiva. Yeah. And we also can like can integrate, we are easily scalable. Our highest deployment is not 30K users, it's close to 55K users, right? Again, from a security standpoint, we are ISO you know, 27001 and SOC 2 type 2 compliant. We also are compliant to uh, EU GDPR and HIPAA as well, where we have uh, anonymization, uh, we have uh, data masking techniques uh, all available in the platform configured at a team level, right? Um, I'll take a pause. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Feel free to visit our website on prohands.net. Uh, thank you for the time. Thank you for your patience. I'll hand the stage back to you, Dr. Shiva. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Prohans. All right. So now we're going to have uh, Xavier. Hey, hello, hi, everyone. This is Ganesh from right. Xavier W. Yeah. So I will share my screen. So, hi, team. Thanks for giving us the opportunity to showcase our pulse tool. On this demonstration, so Pulse Tool basically is an in-house tool which uh, our internal WFM team has created. This Pulse Tool will help us to capture the time tracking as well as the it will help us to auto allocate to the agents. Okay. So I'll just go through one of our customer experience which we have captured on this table. So what is the current process? I just need to uh, explain a little bit about that. So the tickets, the pending tickets from the clients we would be receiving on the email for the for, for the day start of the day. Second, two supervisor need to uh, evaluate that uh, advisor to whom the spending cases were, and it has to be rescheduled, reassigned to the agents who would be present for the day. Third step would be if if there is no action needed, then it uh, directly it should be scheduled. Then the supervisor will re reallocate the cases to the advisor who will be available for the day. 
third again in the day in the mid of the day the operations uh the ticket would be received from the client and that would be a plus ticket again supervise the need to distribute the tickets to the end and agents on the floor floor based on the head for the day step three advice uh, step six should be the thing the advisor used to pick up the ticket and start this productivity so what the solution we have from the hexaway w from the we have to, provided as a solution. So we have an in-house development of uh, Abadis. Abadis means a bot. Then we have uh, Python. We have used Python for this development. And thus, we have used PHP-based uh, web portal for funds. So this will help us for, help the agents to have a view visibility how the big cases will be visible on us. So this is the terminology we have provided as a solution. So this is the design model what we have created for this. The fresh and the pending tickets will be received from the client data. The bot will identify that and bot will add that data in our database. Then the scheduling team will update a weekly roster or the weekly schedules in our database too. Then we had the applied and machine learning algorithm to categorize based on the priority with the scheduled headcount for the day. Then the ML logic will push the data to the database three with the available agents for the data. Then the data allocations to each advisor, it will be done by applicants. Then the agent will start his work on the allocated ticket. If the supervisor, then the step would be the supervisor to monitor the team attendance. If there is any uh, absenteeism has been observed on the, uh, for the lost day, then the supervisor will have an access to push the pending cases to an allocated. Then again, the unallocated data in the database, ML will trigger again and reallocate the case to the new addresses who will be available for that. So this all algorithms have been created by us. So this will help us to to avoid the manual dependency on the supervisor or the on this operation needs to avoid that. So the interfaces which we have created with the help of Pulse. So this is the portal which we have created. So each user will have a specific login to get login on this tool, which would help us uh, further once we get logged in on this tool, which will have a user, user as the employee who would be logging on this tool. Supervisor will have the supervisor view, admin will have the admin view, so super admin will have the super admin. Super admin means the WF team who have created this. Admin means the managers. Supervisor means the PLs or the SMEs who can use this tool. So once user get logged in on this tool, the interface will look like this. So if you can see agent in fact, he has five actually. So he can able to check from when he has get logged in on this tool. You have to just click on the start button to start this activity for the day. Once you click on start button, if you can see here the active sense, this will help us to track his productivity. That means whether he's on active mode or an inactive mode or he's on break or something like that. So we can we can try track that as well on the stream. So once we go down, then we can we can see the allocation what for the particular day what has been allocated on his bucket. Once you click on any case, or once you click on any case, the case details will appear like this on the screen with the proper quarter reference number or something, the case ID or something like that. Then here you need to put the CRM status, whether it is completed or it is in pending status, anything like that. If there is any specific remark, then he can he need to update here. And you have to just click on submit button. Once you click on submit button, the case will directly move to the completed case if it is completed. If it is pending, then again it will go to the real location. This is all what we have as of now. So now I would invite uh, Prison Force. Something? Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you, Dr. Shiva. Uh, so we do a combination of uh, a small deck, but also a, a bit of an insight of our product as well. So uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity, uh, all the folks at GWFM and uh, Dr. Shiva as well. So we are an AI-powered talent supply chain software. Um, we specifically target tech services, IT companies, and GCCs as, as well. Uh, just a little bit of more context of how this came into being. So you think about us as, and think about IT services company, they have multiple levels that they can achieve competitiveness. Uh, one, of course, being GTM capabilities, the others being differentiated offerings and or delivery competitiveness. 
But in all of this, we really focus down on talent supply chain as being that main driver, because if you think about it, talent accounts for almost 80, 85% of costs of these companies. It directly impacts PNL. Uh, most of your choke points within these organizations lie there. So our focus really is on talent supply chain itself. So if you think about tech services companies, really what they're trying to solve for is having the right people in the right project for the right time. Our product suite essentially enables companies to make sure that they have are able to solve for this, right? Um, if we have to go down and look at just a quick couple of slides on how did we come into being, our founders. So the company was founded by Somnath and Kasim. Essentially, um, they've worked for a considerable uh, number of years within the tech services space as consultants for McKinsey, uh, talking about this space. And they really identified that this was a deep problem that needed to be solved in terms of digitizing the whole talent supply chain itself. And that's really the, the origins of how the company had started. Um, where are we today? So we're just about hitting three years as of April this year. We've built six products. We have 20 large IT services clients and IT clients who work with us. More than 500,000 users who are on the platform today. Our team at large as well has worked on 30-odd substantial projects for large customers. Uh, we're a 120-member team spread across four parts of India. And we're also a Sequoia-funded company. Um, and really what we're trying to do here in all of this is if you think about typical vertical SaaS solutions. So you've got players who are very strong in banking, very strong in insurance, pharma, uh, and life sciences. So we really always felt that the IT, IT services space was not well served enough. And we really want to be that vertical player for the tech services space. And that's the origin of all of this. I'll quickly let uh, Chinmay, my colleague, take over. He's going to walk you through a couple of slides about the product and a little bit of the clients that we're offering. And also, uh, double clicking on one of our products at least that we'd like to show to the larger audience here. Uh, over to you, Chinmay. Thanks, Sandeep. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, so, what you see on the screen is the uh, products that we have uh, as of now uh, live at various clients. Uh, right. Uh, and as uh, Sandeep mentioned, we are basically uh, trying to focus on uh, the talent supply chain uh part of the uh, it sources businesses so the aim uh, here is to uh, kind of standardize the supply standardize the demand and then try and uh, make the match uh, happen so that uh, uh, it services companies uh, get to the optimal allocation uh, of of the of their employees and therefore uh, kind of uh, see an impact on their margins right uh, so on the left-hand side, what you see here is a uh, uh, skill prism, which is our uh, skill management module. Um, so one of the key problems that we we identified during our uh, consulting days, as well as uh, before we kind of started up, we spoke to uh, hundreds of uh, 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 folks from IT services, uh, right from CXOs all the way to uh, the RMG associates and employees. Uh, one of the problems that we identified was that uh, the, it's very hard to kind of maintain uh, an inventory of skills that that the employees have. Um, oftentimes, uh, companies do uh, do run certain campaigns and maintain uh, maintain the skill database in in Excel sheets and so on. Uh, but then that information gets obsolete uh, really fast, right? Um, the other problem that we identified was uh, that. Uh, Different parts of the companies use different uh, skill taxonomies or on, uh, skill ontologies. Uh, so, for example, the employee skill mapping will be on a different taxonomy, whereas the demands would be raised on different taxonomy. The pricing will be done on a third taxonomy, and so on. So, there is no cohesive language across the organization uh, that that is being used, right? So, Skill Prism kind of addresses uh, uh, these problems, right? So, it has uh, a uh, it has a configurable way of hosting uh, the scale taxonomy, uh, which means that uh, uh, the the taxonomy can be kind of the hierarchy, the adjacencies, all of those can be uh, configured on the platform itself. And this becomes the system of record for the scale taxonomy. And it has the capability to send that uh, taxonomy to all the downstream systems so that, uh, again, one, comp one comprehensive taxonomy is in use across all the use cases of the organization. Uh, the second thing it does is uh, 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 the market intelligence to keep the taxonomy updated, right? Uh, and again, this is a problem that we've seen in the industry 
that uh, let's say once the taxonomy is defined, uh, it does no one responsible for keeping it updated. Uh, so the new skills that are coming up and that it has been an explosion of uh, uh, skills uh, recently, right, due to digitization. Uh, so we have something called just market intelligence, which kind of scans through various uh, sources of data, uh, such as uh, various job boards of uh, enterprise companies, IT services companies, startups, and so on. Uh, to identify which skills are upcoming in the market and therefore uh, can be added to the taxonomy. The third thing it has is the uh, user skill mapping. Uh, so it has uh, it has provision of or cre or creating the skill profile of an individual automatically before even uh, people log on to the system. And we do this by uh, looking at the existing data footprint of, of what projects have the employees been, be, been staffed on. Um, what uh, kind of trainings that they've done, what kind of certifications that they've done, and uh, come up with a point of view on what kind of skills they might have, uh, might have, have right? uh, and then there are various mechanisms to kind of keep this, uh, 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 keep this information updated. So uh, uh, users can log on to the platform, edit their skills, etc. But uh, you, as they, uh, let's say, complete projects or complete uh, training certifications, the skills kind of get automatically updated in their uh, profile or, or get provided as the recommendation. Right? Um, and then there are various engagement features like, uh, uh, you know, peer nudges, uh, peer and peer to peer endorsements, uh, some uh, gamification elements such as batches, et cetera, to make sure that people are coming back to the uh, platform often and are keeping their skill profile updated. So the second product that we have, and we'll kind of briefly cover that in the demo as well, is Career Prism. So essentially, this is a visual way of representing the various career paths that uh, an individual has uh, in the or organization. And given a current role and a, a target role, what is the skill gap or proficiency gap that I may have, and what are the kind of the learnings, et cetera, that I need to do to uh, kind of cover that gap. Right? So, on the right hand side, we have IntelliPrism, which is our internal talent marketplace module. So here, project managers would uh, come onto the system to raise the demand for their projects. Um, any uh, demand approval workflows uh, that are that may be required would be on the system. Uh, then, once the demand is approved, most of the RMG queue, uh, where uh, the search and match engine uh, can be run, and uh, our system provides recommendations of the candidates that best match. Uh, the demand criteria uh, to the uh, to the resource management group, um, who can then choose to propose those candidates uh, to delivery. Uh, right. Um, then, once the candidate has been proposed, uh, the entire candidate evaluation workflows, etc., happen on the system, uh, right up to the allocation uh, of the uh, employee to the project. Um, so that's IntelliPrism. Match Prism is more outward facing. So it sits on top of uh, the applicant tracking system uh, that companies have. Uh, and it has the capability of unstructured to unstructured match, meaning that uh, it can it can uh, look at a pool of resumes uh, and given a JD, uh, can stack rank the resumes uh, in, in the uh, order in which they uh, match uh, the requirements in the JD. Uh, then Insights Prism is a uh, reporting and dashboarding module, which is embedded in all the other uh, modules. And Outlook Prism is our forecasting and planning module that provides um, uh, a, a talent forecast or a talent need forecast by role skill location uh, uh, in the near term as well as the long term. And needless to say that all of these systems are kind of uh, have to be integrated with the core systems such as the HRMS, uh, ATS, uh, LMS, um, and so on. Uh, so we have an integration layer. We have uh, REST-based APIs that kind of uh, help uh, integrate with the core systems, and therefore all the entire talent supply chain uh, process works seamlessly. Next slide, Sandeep. Yeah. So uh, again, uh, as Sandeep mentioned, we've just about uh, be completing three years, uh, right? And within three years, we've kind of seen a great product market fit and 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 uh, some very good success stories uh, at um, multiple of our clients. Um, so we have uh, the, uh, clients across the IT services companies, including one of the top five uh, global IT companies, uh, multiple uh, PE-backed uh, IT companies, as well as uh, some of the 
uh, listed uh, product engineering players, uh, um, analytics players, and so on, right? Uh, and the levers uh, that these companies are uh, kind of using, again, are, are very varied. Um, so uh, starting from, again, skill cluster-led talent and skills re reimagination programs. So skill cluster is a concept uh, that, uh, that a lot of companies are moving towards now. Uh, it's basically a group of skills uh, that, that, are, that appear in the demand together uh, quite often and therefore can be uh, priced together. Uh, so again, Skill Prism has the capability to define and manage uh, skill clusters um, and therefore uh, identify which employees are multi-skilled uh, and, uh, and therefore can be uh, priced uh, higher. Um, automated skill discovery, we already spoke about uh, career paths. We'll uh, just kind of uh, demo that. Um, then uh, again, uh, more on the uh, uh, the demand fulfillment type of uh, use cases like first time uh, demand capture, right demand capture. Uh, again, we've seen in the industry that this is a big problem. Uh, demand demands are often uh, not first time right and requires a lot of back and forth. Uh, so we have features to kind of uh, shape the demand uh, during creation itself so that that problem goes away. Then obviously we have the uh, AI led search and match. Uh, we have internal job portals to uh, ensure uh, that rotations are happening or uh, people are kind of finding their uh, next projects uh, as per their liking. Um, and again, multiple use cases are there. Uh, in the interest of time, I'll just quickly jump to uh, uh, to a demo and uh, happy to take any uh, questions uh, later or uh, even offline. Um, so just please feel free to put those questions in the chat. Uh, let me quickly share my screen here. So I'm, uh, we'll, we'll just show you a quick snippet of the uh, career path uh, product. Uh, the entire suite of products uh, will probably take about one and a half to two hours to demo. So if you're interested, we can set that up. Uh, but quickly talking about career prism as, uh, as of now, right? Uh, so on the top, what you can see is the current career path that the individual is in, right? Um, so Neha is an associate AIML engineer, and uh, uh, this is the current uh, career path that that she uh, may follow in, in this particular track. But outside of this track, she has multiple other tracks that also kind of fit in the uh, with the skills that she has, right? So uh, she can click on the next role and then kind of uh, uh, figure out that if she wants to go into uh, the data science path, right? Uh, and uh, she wants to become a data scientist, then what does the uh, optimal career path look like, right? And when I say optimal, it basically, uh, the system uh, computes first the role adjacencies, right? Uh, so uh, what the system is saying is that AIML engineer is 90% similar to uh, the work that, that she's doing currently as an associate AIML engineer. Uh, and data scientist is 80% uh, similar to AIML engineer. So this seems to be the most optimal path, right? Uh, she can again play around within this uh, grid of the career architecture. So, for example, if she wants to become a lead AIML engineer, uh, she can again plot that path uh, and look at uh, kind of what is the skill difference uh, that that may be uh, there uh, in the current role versus the uh, target role that she uh, she is selecting. So once I've selected a current, uh, obviously my current role under aspirational role, what I can also do is uh, go ahead and see a skill a skill gap analysis. So <clears throat> what the system tells is uh, that these are all the skills that are required for uh, the target state. And uh, and vis-a-vis uh, -vis my current uh, skill, uh, what is the gap that I have? So, uh, so for example, big data, how do uh, my current proficiency is two, uh, whereas expected is one. So it's a match, right? But for example, I don't have uh, the CDK skill, uh, which is also required for my selected uh, uh, target role. So in this way, it's a very clear representation of uh, where a particular employee is, uh, where he or she wants to go and uh, to get there, what is the kind of the gap uh, uh, that is there. Now, if you have LMS integrations, uh, uh, then we can also say to bridge this particular skill gap, these are the three courses that need to be done. Uh, so that feature is also available. Again, in interest of time, I'll, I'll take a pause here. Uh, again, as I said, happy to uh, kind of do a more detailed demo if there is further interest and happy to take any questions uh, that you might have.
Do you have any questions uh, for any of the players? Thanks, uh, present course. To my audience, do you have any questions for any of the players? Yeah, Blair has a question. Are all WFF vendors using uh, some version of a long to convert workload forecasts into stocking requirements for real time channels? Like, so Dr. Shiva, I just typed a cheeky answer. This is Chris from Injixo. Uh, the short answer is uh, no. <laughs> uh, Erlang is great for you know traditional you know, call uh, traffic, uh, but it really isn't good for non abandoning. Uh, uh, contacts, not even very good for, you know, concurrent contacts like chats. So uh, I'm speaking for Injixo here. Maybe it's true of other vendors, but with Injixo, we've got a suite of, of staffing calculations yeah, that handle all the different uh, channels properly. And to pick up a uh, point that one of the, one of my fellow present uh, fellow presenters made earlier, um, you've got to factor in um, uh, multi-skilling as well and pooling. Uh, and that introduces another layer of complexity. So the short answer is no, it's not Erlang across the board. <laughs> Absolutely. Any others who would like to answer this? Uh, agreed. Erlang is not suitable. Uh, and definitely, if you're looking at blending different channels, Erlang is totally out of the question. Yeah. Incapable sure. of doing so. For sure. It has a job, but it doesn't do everything. <laughs> sure. How about others? Any any, any other yeah. like to answer uh, this question? Any others? Looks like it, everything was clear. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, there's one question, in fact, you know, that came to me in my personal window. Uh, since, you know, we are in the AI world, you know, like AI is, you know, becoming a, a currency for today. And uh, how is your uh, tools and technologies really shaping and uh, ensuring that, you know, customer experience is given, you know, using your, using your tools and technologies? If you could throw some light on how customer experience is really uh, ensured using your you know, tools and technologies. I mean, I feel guilty jumping in again, uh, Dr. Shiva, but um, <laughs> your, your question is very timely uh, because next month we're, we're publishing um, a couple of new blog posts on that very subject. Uh, and, you know, clearly AI, machine learning, deep learning uh, have got a lot of potential uh, for workforce management applications. And uh, certainly speaking for Injixo, perhaps not unique, but certainly with Injixo, we already use machine learning uh, for forecasting. So with Injixo, you get a, it, it basically the algorithms are always on, always uh, you know, digesting data as it's presented from um, the connected systems, ACD, CRM systems. Uh, and basically identifying patterns. So I think one of the other speakers mentioned, you know, it's not just patterns within a day, but across a week, across the seasons, maybe growth and decline patterns across years, spotting these patterns and forever fine tuning the algorithms. So you get a forecast down to a 15 minute interval level for a complete year into the future. And you know our customers find that uh, really handy. Uh, as you can imagine, it's, it's adding a lot of accuracy, saving a lot of time. And what you can do with Injixo is you can take a snapshot of the forecast at the point that you decide to build schedules around the forecast. And then afterwards, you can compare uh, the, the actual uh, patterns with the predicted patterns. And you know, our customers are, are finding that uh, most of the time it's pretty damn accurate. <laughs> But you know that we, we we adopted AI actually before it became big news with Chat GPT and what have you. Uh, but uh, it definitely there are other applications. Watch this space for AI. Absolutely, you're, you're um, there, Dr. Shiva. I'd like to to comment a little bit on that as well about the customer journey. And then, of course, from the perspective of uh, WFM, uh, with regard to the speed of answering to the customer as opposed to you know how you handle all kinds of questions that uh, the customer might have because those are nothing to do with uh, have nothing to do with uh, the WFM uh, uh, functionality from the point of speed sure. of answering our point of view is what we call service level sustainability however good your forecast may be for today uh, even if you would have 100% accuracy you can let the service level go totally south by whatever you do during the intraday management. Yeah. So key point for customer journey 
is what we call service level sustainability, which means maintaining throughout the intraday management, the service level at the promised service level. And that is, you know, really very, very specific for how you handle the intraday management. And yeah. that's why we build very, very specific and advanced tools for that purpose, uh, providing real time service level sustainability throughout the, the intraday uh, management. That's our answer to that. Thank you, Dustin. Could only agree with that. Yes. Any any others would like to have your uh, insights? Dr. Shiva, so, I'd like to take a like, I'd like to take two minutes here from the customer yeah. engagement. So and from the customer experience, when you look at Prohans as a, as a platform, right. we are engaged from the very beginning. So our customer onboarding journey is smooth. We are with the customer throughout the time. Also, our platform is completely customizable and configurable, right? So basically individual teams, individual thresholds, individual metrics are completely customizable. That's one. Um, I think the 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 uh, the degree of flexibility that the platform has also kind of leads to increased customer uh, satisfaction. So that is one thing that we pride ourselves on. Also, uh, we are foraying into the AI ML recommender systems. So that is something that's on our own as well. Yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Our brothers, any, any, anyone? In fact, there's another question here. If you could just look at the question uh, in a uh, chat box here, Travel has, uh, uh, has uh, put up some question here. Someone would like to take this. In the meantime, while you know, we read these questions, uh, so uh, I have a question for President Force. Uh, how, how relevant is your uh, uh, tool in considering the AI and you know, like changing the JD and uh, the roles are getting changed and a lot of roles are getting redundant. How is your tool really uh, helping solving the current and future problems? Right. So, uh, Dexter, as I mentioned, right, uh, first of all, it starts with skills, right? Skills, we believe, is quite foundational. And um, off rate, obviously, uh, with the advent of Gen AI, and uh, and all we've kind of seen uh, some of those skills uh, shifting, right? So not only the Gen AI related skills uh, have become more prominent, uh, but also from an IT sources uh, uh, point of view, uh, more prompt engineering kind of skills have become uh, become uh, a lot more prominent, right? Um, so uh, we we have that uh, those kind of skills included in our uh, taxonomy that we have uh, off the shelf, right? Um, and then we're we're ourselves using a lot of uh, Gen AI, right? So uh, like uh, while you're raising a demand, right? Um, to create a JD uh, with a, by just answering a couple of questions is is uh, is a feature that we're kind of working on, right? And uh, then using uh, a lot more AI in uh, kind of identifying the skills uh, from the JD itself. Um, uh, identifying which skills are adjacent. So, for example, if I know Angular, uh, can I uh, really upskill very fast in, let's say, Express, right? Um, so those kind of use cases. And then in uh, in the uh, discovering of skills uh, of, of the associates from uh, from the data uh, that 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 already exists. Um, demand shaping, demand prioritization, search and match, all of this uh, uh, kind of leverages some of the other uh, advanced analytics uh, or AI type of uh, algorithms. Got it. Thanks, Ramai. How about others? Uh, we have some questions here. Um, someone has asked about um, Genesis. So we don't have time Genesis here. Any other question that, you know, be answered here. Any, any anyone else would like to add on the customer experience perspective? How of your tool is geared up to create a value? So we have a team uh, from Sysimath uh, and uh, about others, the Prawns and uh, Calvario. There was a question from anonymous attendee about the scope of the workforce management market okay. outside India. Tried to help. I haven't got some statistics to hand. I can probably find some, but I've just put a couple of comments in there. 
and I also put a spelling mistake. Sorry about that. I meant to write large market, not large marky, whatever a marky is. But uh, I meant the Philippines is also a large market. That's what I would mean to say there. Yeah, to add on to that, uh, WFM is really growing while uh, uh, while leaders and industry is saying that a lot of uh, roles are going to be run down because of AI is going to take over some of the repetitive roles. But so, uh, you know, like uh, highly skilled and, and the hair knowledge, especially the tools of you know, US knowledge and experiences definitely give them more jobs and more job opportunities, which can yeah. really do some kind of an intelligent way to solve the problems. Uh, that will give you know, more job opportunities. Worldwide, yeah. we see that a lot of job opportunities though, already started coming up. I don't see any layoff in this workforce management or resource management area. Uh, on the uh, function and the resources are very important in the organization, either you know, scale up or you know, scale down. No, WFN function is really plays a key role. That's any Great. other topic you would like to share? Any, any questions? Just wanted to ask one question to all of you that uh, what are the key uh, predictions that you see in, in uh, 2024 uh, you know, from your perspective and your tool perspective and industry perspective globally? What are the key predictions that you see in 2024? Now, I shouldn't do all the talking here, <laughs> but if you go to the, we've actually published a paper uh, about, we, we did some research some analysis uh, about that and we've identified a number of key trends and I don't want to steal uh, that thunder but uh, there is a we have a, a, a content library uh, completely free and it's not all about our product uh, but we have a paper in here I'll just look for it and um, maybe share the link in the chat window if that's all right sure. I could, that will give a much, a much better answer than I can give uh, just in a few seconds <laughs> So here we go. So I'm just putting this in the Q and A uh, window. Can I add a question in here, Doctor Shiva? I don't know. Um, let's have a look. If I go to the chat, so I'm putting a, a, a URL in the chat window there. So uh, there's an ebook. Hopefully, there's some interesting information in there. Feedback's always welcome. If you, uh, tell us if you like it or you don't like it, but, but the, hopefully that's useful. So. Now I'll share it with everyone. Brilliant. Wonderful. I think uh, there are no more questions. If there are any questions, you know, I come across, uh, I'll be able to share it with you. And if there are any inquiries of your tools, if anyone would want to know more and uh, has any inquiries or any questions, I would definitely, you know, like pass on and, you know, uh, create that connect with you people. We'll appreciate all of your joining for short notice. Really enjoyed learning from each one of you. I think each one of you really have a great and uh, incredible tools which you're offering to the industry and uh, industry is going to have. There are this 50 billion USD market cap. In fact, uh, that's going to be increasing as AI is evolving and everyone is, you know, digitizing and you know, automating. They had to either, you know, to stay in the business, they had to embrace adopt and scale. There's no other way that, you know, we'll work in enough spreadsheets and then continue mm -hmm. to be there. I mean, they're not going to be there in the market. They're not going to be there in existence. Wonderful. Wonderful talking to all of Great. you. Uh, thank you so much for taking your time out and sharing your valuable time and uh, presenting. Uh, we're going to have this, you know, in fact, uh, we have this video uh, on LinkedIn Live, a lot of them are watching there. And even after some time, they can watch this. This will make it available to all our members. Anyone would want to have uh, any queries, you know, they could reach out to you. And then I would like to have uh, all your presentations uh, and we will uh, add that feature on our website so that anyone uh, would click on the WFM product and they can click on to your link and they can reach out to you directly. You want to make this uh, uh, available to all of you. All of you, really privileged to uh, uh, have all of you, and I really love the presentation, and the great questions. Thank you, Dr. Shiva, for the invitation, for inviting our agenda to participate. It was really uh, uh, very interesting. Thank you so much, and we'll uh, make sure that you you have our presentation, and you can uh, provide it uh, to anyone who would like to uh, have a look on it. Wow.
couldn't put it any better than that, uh, Dr. Chief. Thank you very much for inviting us. That was uh, tremendous. Thank you. And we will share the uh, material with you. Yeah. Thank you all so much. Really have a wonderful day and uh, have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.